All right. So today I have with me Bill Letson here on the show. So Bill, let's get right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, your background, and then please share with us your life-changing near-death experience. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joshua, for uh, having me on your show, getting uh, interviewed from uh, the Philippines. It's quite an honor. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's quite a, quite a world we live in now. And um, so, yeah, my name is uh, Bill Letson, and uh, I live here on the central coast of California, halfway between L.A. and San Francisco, um, a little um, ranch house in, out in nice. the... Uh, on a few acres with the uh, water all around us and nice. uh, it's absolutely paradise awesome. and i'm retired now but uh in the 90s um i was working as a firefighter i was a engineer i drove the fire engine um for santa barbara county i was at station 11 and uh in 94 we had a pretty bad flu season and we were running calls um and things weren't, you know, we didn't protect ourselves like, you know, with a standard thing now worldwide. But, um, yeah, we just uh, we just did our thing. And we had this woman who was very ill. We got called to her by the neighbors. They hadn't seen her in a few days. And, you know, the newspapers were stacking up on the front. And the car was there. And the mailbox was starting to fill up. And... When we pulled up, they said, she's in there and she's sick. And so we broke in and they were right. And we found her in the back bedroom and she was really close to uh, passing away. And we, you know, sprung into action, just started pushing furniture out of the way and getting the windows open. And my job was to get oxygen on her. So I slid across the bed and I was getting the mask on her and she kind of came to and she saw all these firemen around her and she let out this big exhalation of relief um so that she was so happy that we were there and she exhaled and i took in i was breathing in doing my job and i took a full both lungs full i could feel her hot breath go in and i looked at the medics they saw it too and they and i looked at the medics i said this ain't gonna go well wow. and uh and it didn't. Uh, I got sick, but um, we got her in an ambulance into the hospital, and she came home a week later and fully recovered, and it was, you know, a save. Um, but a couple of days, we went on days off, and a couple of days into it, I started getting sick, actually, immediately that night. And then a couple of days later, I was really sick because um, I'd uh, been throwing up, and I was going the other way, and I just couldn't keep any fluids in me. And it was like I was this shrinking man. I was all mm. hunched over and dark. My skin was dark. And it happened really fast. And I noticed my heartbeat was like 150. And I tried to take my pulse at my uh, wrist. And I couldn't get a pulse. So I knew that was down below 80 um, systolic. It was, you know, 70 over 40 or something like that. And... So I knew I was in trouble and I headed for the phone. I called my family and um, I just, when I, when I um, spoke, it was just a whisper. I could barely, you know, it was just that, it was just that much of a devastating um, flu virus. And they figured it out. They called 911 and the guys from Santa Barbara County Fire came, picked me up. Uh, started IVs, got me in an ambulance, got me to a hospital, and the emergency room was packed. Um, it was people that were sick all over, uh, all ages. And they put me in a room, and I was in the back. Um, and, you know, they'd given me a couple of IVs, and I was starting to, uh, you know, feel a little better. And, you know, I, my thought was I could probably get out of here. And, uh, you know, we kind of topped off the cylinder a little bit there. And um, and they said, no, you can't go. You we, Doctor hasn't even seen you yet, and we're overwhelmed with patients, and just hang in there and hear something we're giving everybody. And they injected this uh, thing with, uh, you know, it was something for pain, something for nausea. And the, the, the nurse was in a hurry. She's a good lady. She was in a hurry, and she pushed it in all the way. And 
I just keeled over. And I don't think she realized that my, you know, how fragile my, um, you know, my blood pressure and stuff was that it was this, I looked like this young, strong guy, but um, I came in there physiologically. I came in there on my knees and um, that was just a, you know, that shot was just something that just knocked me out. And I fell straight back on the bed. My, my wife was there. Some of the fire guys were there and my eyes just rolled back and I fell straight back and I was out cold and it was about three 30 in the afternoon and I was gone from there from then on in. And, um, you know, that kind of startled everybody and everybody doctor, everybody came running in and my wife said, they just went to work on you. They were kind of frantic and they pushed Narcan, which is something that would take away the painkiller. Um, and they pushed that, uh, she wrote it down three times and they were getting the blood pressure that she wrote down was 40 over zero. And so that was, you know, you're not going to be surviving much longer with that, uh, kind of blood pressure. You know, you, you get down 70, you know, 70 over 40 or 50 or something like that. You're not going to be conscious, um, very long. And so anyway, the they had a head down, they pushed the IVs, they kept the Narcan, and they shipped me up to intensive care because they could not get me back. And um, and the blood pressure was not coming back. And so I sat up there in um, uh, intensive care overnight, and sometime during that night, um, I left my body, and I wasn't Bill anymore. Uh, I wasn't anything close to a human being. Um, I was something we all are. I had gone back to this being and I was flying through this star filled realm. And it was an amazing feeling. It's like I had been let out of a hot, dark, stuffy closet. And I was this huge, expanded cloud uh this huge expanded balloon it seemed like i went on forever and i was flying along and it felt like somebody was pouring honey all over my brain and you know that uh euphoria of uh of that feeling was going through all my nerves and everything was just euphoric and it was like a and i, I said this i've not been uh, ashamed. I said it every single time, but it felt exactly like a cosmic orgasm. And there's, that's the only thing that, you know, we've got our own definition of that here, but that's the only thing that it, um, came close to describing it. It was a complete, um, ecstasy of, and it had a sensual side to it. Um, you know, that's a basis of life. And so I was flying along and I was, first thing I thought was, man, what the heck was that? <laughs> that was gnarly. And, uh, you know, being this person, uh, being Bill and, um, I said, man, that was, that was gnarly. That was, it was so difficult. And, you know, there's nothing has been difficult about my life. I have I've wanted everything, you know, parents and education and home life. And my wife is the princess and um, career. Everything's uh, everything was perfect even then. And um, so, yeah, I didn't. To, to compare what we really are and where we go when we leave, you can't really do it because from this standpoint, we've got all these layers, um, you know, these emotions. We've got these past traumas and we've got these forward-looking anxieties and we've got the modern day input, you know, of uh, screens that, you know, keep us in um, sort of a down state. And, you know, that's what we're here for. We're, this is kind of uh, the world of um, fear lessons. We are supposed to get control of fear and realize that we're love. We are pure love. Um, 
So anyway, back to my story. I'm flying along, and um, and I was thinking, how in the world did I believe I was this dude? How is it possible that I thought I was this guy? It was like this r cosmic trick um, that we sign up for, and we forget everything that we really are, and we come into these lives, and we do the best we can with the challenges that are coming our way. And I understood all of that because I wasn't, I, you know, I wasn't Bill. I wasn't a human being. I was something I've always been. And you, we hear this thing about the Akashic records. And what I saw coming at me was it was like if you were flipping the pages of a microfish, you know, the old thing. And it was like a, a math book because most of it was math and it was just formulas and geometry and diagrams and anything you want to um, think about you had instant knowledge of all that like this universal mind with all this information it's it's all there when we cross over um so yeah i just saw these pages coming by you couldn't absorb it you just I just knew that anything I thought, and I tested it. I thought, well, what about, you know, this thing with physics? And here comes the pages. And so, yeah, that Akashic Records thing is real, and that universal mind and that unlimited intelligence information that uh, we're all connected to, that's real. So I'm flying along, and I'm thinking, this is awesome. This is, I am so stoked to be back. And around me were all these um, orbs, these giant balls of color and flow, and they're just showering me with this welcoming, this, um, I was being paraded through, and they were just so proud of me, and it was really happy, I was really happy to be home. And I was flying through that, I said, this is just perfect. And then I landed. Uh, everything shifted, and I was in this place. It was like a facility or a clinic. Um, seemed like it was a like a medical thing, and there were beds there, gurneys. And there was equipment on the walls and um, tables, and right in front of me there were these three little uh, hooded guys, and they had dark robes, and they were about four foot tall. And they were overjoyed to see me. They were giggling and bouncing around. And they were saying things like, how was it? What did you learn? What can you tell us? And um, they were giggling and bumping into each other. And uh, it was uh, astonishing. And I wasn't fearful at all. That whole fear thing was gone. And... I was just sort of like, well, what's going on here? And um, w one of them picked up on it. He came forward and he looked, took a long look at me up and down. And he turned to the other two and he said, he doesn't remember us. And they all started gigging, giggling uproariously and bouncing around. And they were incredibly joyful and playful and loving. And that is a really big statement because that is once we leave here that is our universe um you know we come down here for these hard lessons but on the other side everything is sweetness and kindness um no matter what they look like some some people think these little guys are demons or something they weren't uh we just got the we're getting the wrong story down here we're getting the fear story and um and I was like, man, I sorry, you guys, I can't remember you. you I it's you kind of, uh, I kind of think I remember you, but um, give me a little time. I'm, this is very strange. I, I'm in these different places all of a sudden. And then there was this other guy, and he was in the background, and he was this tall, wispy guy, and he was letting everything play out. And and then he came forward, and he looked like he was underwater. In fact, if you took a jar of water and and stirred it really fast and then looked at it from the side, 
he was like this spinning vortex. He was like this spinning vortex. And when he walked, he moved like a, like a whirlpool or a whirlwind. And he had this big smile and bright eyes and just this incredible vibe. Um, and when he walked, you know, part of him would separate and then the rest would catch up. And um, you just knew he was the coolest guy, uh, even though it was this bizarre looking uh, person or being. And as he came forward, his, you know, that swirling motion, that was uh, connecting with me. And as he got closer and closer, my chest just tightened and my, my um, my chest just expanded and my uh, throat just clamped down and I was being overwhelmed with love. There was so much love coming from this spinning whirlpool being. And I've used all kinds of terms. I've called him a trimmed up Gumby and a, a walking stick insect. Um, but he was this loving spinning energy and as he came forward this love was just overwhelming and i felt like i was going to drop to the ground and cry weep uncontrollably from love so much love uh coming from this guy and he, as he came forward he was smiling wildly and chuckling and he it was really obvious he was stoked to see me drop in um and you know i got the impression that it was a, a sort of a relationship between a father you know the perfect original and uh, a child and that i was a, whatever a temporary copy of him or something that was in the earth plane to have adventures and there's thousands of copies of him. And you know, that fits every narrative, uh, whatever religion or, you know, spiritual um, story that you have, that, that there is this greater being um, that we are connected to. So he came forward and he was, uh, in, the, in the Hindus, uh, this guy wrote to me and he said, we call him the laughing king. And uh, I thought that was really cool. And he said that those little guys were, uh, this Hindu guy, he said those little guys are, um, he had a name for them, but he said they're these little joyful, playful, uh, clumsy um, little helpers. And all of that fit. Uh, I was like, this is remarkable. Um, uh, and uh, lots of uh, religions contact me and they're, they're like, you were with Lord Krishna, and this is why. And they fill all that in. And so, you know, I have a fantastic story, but everyone should realize that that story is repeated throughout humanity. Um, we, we really are. We really have this amazing connection um, to the divine. We are the divine. Um, and there's never anything to worry about because it's, it's all playful. It's all happy. It's all sweetness and kindness. Um, we just don't know it. So anyway, he was chuckling all the time. And um, we had this back and forth. And every time I said something, he just got a big chuckle out of it. And I could feel when he laughed, I could feel his laughter inside of me. Um, it was that um, penetrating, I guess. And so I, I'm looking around and the little guys are just giggling and, uh, you know, slapping each other on the back. And um, and he's kind of chuckling at them. And then every time I had something to say, he would laugh or chuckle at that. And, you know, I got the impression it wasn't, this isn't very organized, whatever's going on here. And so I said, well, you guys, uh, are we supposed to like review my life or something like that? Uh, do you guys want to uh, get started with that? And everybody laughed at that. And, but he was cool. And he said, sure, sure. Let's do that. 
how do you want to start? And so I, I thought it was a little strange that I was, you know, sort of controlling things, but I said, okay. And so I started talking um, about things in my life. It, it was not a review of, of life like an indie ears talk about where they see how they've affected others and feel how they've affected others. It was none of that. It was just me telling some rap. Um, you know, I wanted to move on from that facility. I got a taste of what we really are, we, that we are this infinite, limitless being. And I thought, well, I can get back to where that place was that I was initially. And so I told a few stories just to kind of fill in. I told a story about my wife um, and how when we came out of college, I got offered this job on an island and she wanted me to take it. And it's, it's, a, it's way off the coast. It was an hour helicopter ride off the coast and it was with the park service and we'd be there by ourselves, a little cottage on this Island and we're supposed to look after the wildlife and groups would come out occasionally, but not too often. And, you know, I was a fireman. I was enjoying the camaraderie of a fire crew and all the shenanigans that went with that. And, um, you know, the excitement of going to fires and, and, you know, my, thing was you know sweetie it sounds kind of boring we're just going to be on an island and she she really wanted it and I, I took a fire job and you know that was you know I was 24 but now I'm almost 70 and uh that job sounds awesome I take that park service job in a second and um so anyway yeah I talked about that and I thought maybe um you know, I uh, would have, for her, uh, something she wanted because she never really wants anything. And um, I thought that would be nice. And there was a couple of other things that I, you know, thought I should have done. It was nothing horrible or tragic and because I've been a pretty good guy my whole life. And then he interrupted me and he just goes, okay, that's enough. Time to go back. And... And I did notice that nobody was listening. They were still giggling and bouncing around. And uh, he told me, time to go back. And so before I tell you about that, just uh, something I just remembered, that movie Communion, there's a scene in there where um, Christopher Walken, you know, he's going through this abduction thing through the whole movie. And it's like a fearful thing and the music's very fearful and stuff. But if you turn the sound off and just watch those little guys, they never do anything um, horrible to anybody. And in the end, you know, he goes out looking for answers and he finds this beam of light out in the woods and he walks into this light. He, he doesn't go into a ship. Um, he goes into the light and he changes dimensions that's my opinion and he's in this uh you know this facility it's like a, a medical place and these little squatty little guys they look you know they're bouncing around and they're joyful and playful and they're high-fiving him and they're dancing around and that is exactly what i experienced and um they the appearance of them was exactly what i saw and if you notice in the background, there are these kind of slim, wispy guys that are watching over things in that movie. And, um, you know, you could easily say that there, this is this, you could put a whirlpool around them and they're like this spinning, energetic being that's <clears throat> flowing everywhere. So back to the, um, my exit from this uh, facility. And so he came forward. He says, time to go back. And I was like shocked. I was like, what? Because, I, because that being away from the body and feeling that bliss and that release of all those uh, emotional traumas and dramas. And I've had a gifted life. I can't say there's anything that really, you know, absolutely crushed me in my life 
but they're there. Uh, previous lives or whatever, we all carry this these heavy emotional burdens, this emotional baggage. And to go back underneath that was, to me, that was like, there's n no way I'm going to do that. Um, so I, I was shocked and I said, I go back. I'm, I'm not going back there. There's no way I'm going back there. And, you know, he goes, yeah, you got to go back. He, you know, he was cool. And uh, he was like, you got things to do and they're important. And, um, you know, if you look at, in the world uh, just in this last year, there are important things going on with this. It's just starting, but with this NDE thing, it's just gone crazy. Um, podcasters and Joshua, all you guys say the same thing. When I ask you, y'all say the same thing. It's just something I felt I needed to do. I needed to start talking about this stuff. And, you know, that's not, that's, that's the hand of the divine coming in and, you know, moving things along here on earth. So, um, let's see. So, uh, yeah, I, I told him, I said, look, I'm almost 40. That I'm not, I got nothing more to do in life. You know, I'm just this burned out old guy practically. And he thought that was funny. And then I told him, uh, you know, I got lots of friends and they'll think of me, but they'll be fine. And my parents and my wife, they're, they're going to get rocked by my demise, but they'll be okay. <laughs> And I said, they'll, they'll get over it. And uh, they're strong people. And he thought that was really funny. And he goes, all right, enough. You got to go back. Come on. And so as he came forward, the room just started to break up. And I could feel it dropping, definitely dropping in frequency of slowing down. I was going to another channel, um, another vibe, a low vibe. And the room started to spin and he started to um, get wispier and wispier. And then everything just sort of spun away. And I dropped in away into darkness. And I was, you know, I moved again. I moved to another channel and I was down by my body. I could sense my body was nearby and, um, before I got back in my body, there was this realization that um, this is a very dark and dismal and lonely place. And it's when you're out of your body, you know, in this earth plane, um, it can be uh, very scary. Um, and that's sort of this thing about the, you know, the valley of the shadow of death. Um, when we first leave our bodies, we, if our vibration is good, we get through it without anything. It's, but if it's not, we can get held there and uh, in those lower vibes. And, you know, it's a, it's a place of nightmares. And as I was going back in my body, I got a feel of that, that this is it's a rough place. And then I was back in my body and back in the physical and I woke up and it was five, four thirty five, something like that. And I could see the machines. You know, they were squeezing my arm and stuff and um, kept waking me up and I could see the lights of the machines and the vital signs were low, but they were climbing. And I watched them for the next couple of hours. I just woke up and I'd be back out, you know, and then they got to where they were, um, you know, something sustainable. And I, could stay awake and I was sort of sitting up looking around and the nurse walked by and it shocked her. She was like, you're awake. And I'm like, yes, I am. And she goes, man, you have been project for the night. We didn't know how you got so far gone. Didn't know if you were coming back and we didn't know what had happened. And I said, yeah, okay, that's cool. And she goes, I got to tell the doctor. And I go, okay, you can tell the doctor. But first, what am I doing back here? I was pissed. And you know, that's the only way I could put it. I was cut off from that euphoric freedom that we come from. 
and all the heaviness came back. And I, it, it's like energetically, it's like somebody unloaded a ton of rocks onto you and you just got to deal with it. And, um, and I was, I told her, I said, what am I doing back here? I was home. I was with my best bros. How did I get back here? I had died. I had bought the farm. I was convinced of it. And without a, this is one of these old nurses, without a beat, she goes, honey, you've been in escrow, but you fell out of escrow and now you're back with us. And, um, you know, she had her hands on my shoulders and she was like, you need to get your head around that. And um, I got it right away. I got it. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm back with Bill and that's who I am. And, you know, she been told by mediums and stuff that that was awesome that you had that because she grounded you and you weren't, you know, lost in your thoughts of remembering where you had just been. And a, a lot of indie ears, you know, they go through years of um, depression and some of them find addiction. And, you know, it could be 10, 20, 30 years before they really process what happened. Um, because it's such a shock to come here and, you know, they, proof of this is when a baby's born, the first thing they do is cry. And, you know, that's what an indie ear, if you really look at them, listen to them, it's what they're saying. They were just devastated that they were in this place. And, you know, that baby, that's a connected to that eternal being that, infinite being that um, is having a having a life in that baby and the um, the impact of coming into this world is very very hard so uh, the doctors came my family came and I was just like blah, 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 blah. I couldn't tell them enough I said you guys don't understand this is we it's so cool Everything is so cool. There's no, there's no Death Star. There's no uh, evil um, aliens or anything like that. We, we just go back to where we came from, and everybody's a sweetheart. And I sounded like a kook, um, you know. And uh, I was home for uh, about a week on the couch, and. Um, I had some interesting things go on during that week, but I, when I got back to work, the guys were immediately there like, hey, man, we, we heard through the grapevine you had something really wild go on while you were out. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I, I'd tell everybody. And, you know, the religious guys came out of the woodwork. They wanted to hear the story, but they really didn't like the story because there weren't any robes and uh, bearded guys and stuff. But there really was. Um, it's just, you know, not how we tell the story down here. And and then after a while, somebody came by and said, hey, you know, the guys up in the office are starting to talk about you. You know, you, you know you're a fireman and you can't be, um, we can't have lunatics on the fire department. So, so I was like, right away, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, I get it, I get it. So I, uh, I dummied up. And uh, I zipped it for about 15 years and I retired in 2010. And then I went looking for um, some answers. I really didn't, I really didn't need, I really wasn't need to, pro I didn't really need to process that. I knew it was real and I knew, you know, that would, I would return to that when my time was up here, but um, something else what's going on. And we see it in the world now. Um, what I went looking for answers and, um, but, uh, that's my story. Wow. And it's amazing. You know, one, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, first of all, I want to say thank you for sharing that. Like just even hearing it again, I already felt like the emotion, <laughs> you know, just the love even bubbling in your heart. Um, you know, I wanted to know, like, what was your wife's response to the story? Because I don't think I've ever heard that in other interviews. So how did she react when you told her? 
Well, it, she was like, I remember, like most of them, you know, my parents, I could see the disappointment in their face. Oh. <laughs> and then in I my wife, I could, I could see the confusion in her face. Hmm. But she also knew uh, me, you know, uh, we'd been yeah. together for some a few years then. And she, I would tell it with uh, absolute um, enthusiasm. And, yeah. and, but I would tell this ridiculous story that nobody was talking about back then. Uh, <laughs> and so she, she didn't judge. She just, um, <laughs> you know, in a couple of years after that, I said, you know, she said something like she had a robe on and I go, that robe looks just like those guys. I remember, you know, when you, when you pull it up over your head <laughs> and she goes, well, she goes, well, let's make a picture. And I, so I took, put her in front of a, 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 um, you know, the sun was coming in through some drapes and I put her in front of that. So we had a silhouette and then we had them in three different, you know, one of them was turned to look at the other and we took three different ones and we put it together. And, you know, that was some years after that, but I said, that's what I saw. That's what I, that's who was in front of me and they were giggling and they were talking to each other. And, um, she, so to answer your question, she's always been sort of interested, but like, you know, most of us here, you, you can't just, there's no way you can just go, okay, yeah, I got it. I understand. And you're right. It, we can't do that because it's so far from what we think we are. I mean, even to this day. Like she never said, oh, you know, I think I believe you now. <laughs> After all the stories well, you've no. shared and spoken. Yeah, no, it's um, there, a lot's gone on. And uh, so, yeah, she's not, um, you know, there's this thing Kundalini. Right. And, you know, we've got this spark of source of God energy. It sits at the base of our spine. And at some point in all of us, this is our, this is our path, it wakes up. And if we, you know, eat right and stay away from, you know, medications and alcohol and reconnect with the earth, you know, and the sun and structured water and things like that, it nurtures this energy to continue its journey. And what it wants to do is come up through all the chakras and then over years and years and then go out through the crown and reconnect with um, that divine energy of home. And the person that, it, you know, goes through this, they end up living uh, a life of heaven on earth. And that's me. That's what uh, I've been, you know, a lot of you guys say, oh, you're so joyful and you're, got, you're so full of love. And, you know, and I always, I wasn't always uh, this guy. <laughs> this has been a, um, a transformation, you know, with this. Yeah. And she picked up on it completely she said you are not the guy that i married mm. um and i'm like she goes you are an incredible upgrade uh, awesome so, <laughs> so yeah go. it's real it's, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a real thing for sure for sure i mean so what were your beliefs prior to this experience i mean did you have like in a, re a religious upbringing or like skeptic like what did you believe prior to your experience yeah i, w I was raised catholic and okay. uh you know there's all kinds of rituals and the weekly yeah. thing and all that stuff and i was convinced that you know sitting in church that m most people were thinking about doing something else other than the fire and brimstone story you know coming <laughs> i kind of figured out that was a big empty um you know hall that we were in and what you know i went to school for forestry and i've ha had all these backcountry ranger jobs and always been a surfer and i felt that close to the divine uh when i'm in the woods or in the ocean mm. or you know running trails with dogs or something that has always been my okay and i knew it was real um i know there's something there and it, the connection is you know living sort of like a native american you know mm. close to the earth and um mm. so yeah that's I knew that I wasn't going to find it in uh, with a group or in a church or something. Right. 
Right. So even though you were raised Catholic, yeah. you didn't necessarily believe in all the dogma and all those things about the afterlife and, or did you a little bit and then just, you know, held it loose? Well, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You hold it loosely, you know, you don't stand out in the crowd. Yeah. And okay. when everybody says something, you could say amen with everyone else and, uh, <laughs> you know, right. play along. Um, but especially after my NDE, I knew, uh, okay, this is based on, these religions are based on something, but it's not, you know, they're missing the main point that, that it's all pure love and joy and yeah, that's just what it's just what we are. It's, yeah, we yeah. we don't have to earn it. We don't have to, uh, you know, go through a number of uh, steps or um, recite anything. We are it. Um, where where was that place that you went to that you were saying is like a? It was a different channel. I guess when you were going lower and, um, like what what would you call that place? Especially. If if I were a religious person, you, I would just like automatically assume, oh, see, that was hell, right? But what's your take on it? Like, what would you say was based upon your understanding? I would say that um, there's a there's a movie called Astral City. Okay. In Astral City, there's a channeled <clears throat> book by this very famous medium in Brazil. I I get excited about this movie because it can really um, you know, the book and the movie, it can really help people uh, to understand some really powerful truth. Hmm. And it's um, the story is about this guy when he uh, it's about this um, doctor and he dies and he moves through this really scary place. It's dark and there's lightning and people are acting very strangely and hmm. um and he's there for some time, and he notices when people start saying things like, you know, people that are there suffering, when they say things like, I'm sorry, it's my fault, I'm so sorry, how can I, that these beams of light appear, and they take him out of there, and they take him uh, to this place, this um, facility, this like a medical facility where they heal, and mm -hmm. it's all about emotions. Our, our lives are all about emotions and mm. quality of our feelings. And that's what this whole thing's about. And um, yeah, they, he heals in this medical facility with beds and uh, equipment and stuff. And then he moves in this astral city uh, where there's, you know, it's this remarkable futuristic city. And, you know, a medium came to me and she said, you were at the rehab. Um, where souls go right after they, you know, clear out of earth and get through that valley of the shadow of the death, they end up in this rehab place. And then when they, when they're feeling better, then they can get, you know, into the city and, you know, wa watch the movie. It's really cool. And that's exactly what, that's exactly what, uh, you know, if you, if you sort of um, follow my narrative, it's kind of where I went. Um, mm. So, yeah, and there's something beyond the astral city. And, you know, if you listen, if you read like Bentoff and some of these guys, Monroe, there's something right. beyond the astral right. plane. Right. There, There is a, a heavenly divine realm beyond the astral plane. And um, that's what we aspire to. And, yeah, I, I, did I answer your question? I yeah, get I think off. so. I mean... I mean, so who do you, how do you think if you were to describe the astral and then there's a heavenly one and then like a lower vibrational place, like what determines where you're going to, where a person goes? Like how, cause right. A religious person is like, well, we get to heaven through Jesus Christ. And then you go to hell based upon, you know, the sins that you do. So like, what do you think based upon your experience or based upon, you know, your years of studying these things, like what, what determines where a person goes after or when they transition? Yeah, um, they determine it. Um, hmm. They, the in all of us determine our vibration by, you know, our frequency, by how we live our lives, right. um, and 
you know, this is a process. We have thousands of lives. And, you know, that's the whole thing with that movie, Groundhog Day. <laughs> uh, you know, Bill Murray, each one of his days is considered one of our lives. Mm -hmm. And with each day, with each life, we got a choice um, to be kind and to be compassionate and patient and helpful or to be selfish. And those are opposite ends of the scale. You know, this is enlightened state of kindness. And then down here, this is a selfishness. Mm -hmm. And so there's this whole range of emotions uh, in between. And we are, with each of our lives, we are working our way up that ladder where we can, um, you know, transcend those lower vibrational places with ease. We don't even realize they're there. Uh, it's like a gnat, you know, right. flying by us. Um, we don't resonate with those realms, so they're not something that um, captures us. Uh, mm. It doesn't hold us there. Mm. So basically what you're saying is that like your vibration, just the way that you live your life, like, uh, uh, like, like, like attracts like, right? Like law of attraction, you can say. So if you were a quote unquote good person, right? The way we perceive and understand goodness, you will end up in a good environment. But if you're like <laughs> not so good person, you know, it's not a, a God that's sending you there. You send yourself there based upon your, your, negativity your your hatred and bitterness and jealousy just the things that we would deem as you know not so good and you would be in that type of environment is that what you're saying yeah that that's where you're going to end up when you leave this life and yeah. it's not forever um mm -hmm. it's just until you sort out how did you get there mm -hmm. and you know because we are these eternal infinite beings and we're just this is just an amusement park for us. Mm. And mm. so there, there's this guy, Tom Campbell. He talks about uh, mm -hmm. what happens. He's got a video and it's called what happens after you die, mm. how you, um, you know, the, the partition is taken down and you uh, blend back into the uh, divine realm and you take your place wherever your energy puts you. Right. And so, yeah. I mean, the reason why I bring up these questions is because um, I had a religious background. You know, I, I used to think that you're in hell forever. <laughs> There's no second chances. And then if you believe in a certain way, not even based upon how good you were, but if you have a belief in like Jesus and things like that, you know, you just say, forgive me all my sins on your deathbed. And then you go to heaven for the rest of your life. But then if you're like a Buddhist who, who lived a good life, but yet you didn't believe in this particular Christian faith and you'd be in hell Forever, and, you know. So I bring this up because I know a lot of my viewers have a similar background as as I did. You know, um, I don't believe in hold to that stuff anymore. But I'm doing this for the sake of asking these questions for the sake of I know for myself, like as a fundamentalist back in the day, it's just heaven and hell. <laughs> There's no purgatory, and once you're there, you're there. <laughs> you're stuck in there for not just millions of years, but for all eternity. You know. So I'm asking. I just know that your experience, if true, um, it's 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 it could cause a lot of a uh, conflict with someone's personal religious belief you know um but if what you did experience was true they should consider it right that that, that what you're saying might possibly be was actually what's going on yeah i appreciate you sharing that because uh, that just makes a lot more sense like you, you'll attract what you're vibrating you know so it's not not like an unfairness of some deity or some god sending you somewhere but if you are responsible for your life and the choices that you make it makes a lot of sense in my opinion. What I would like to know, and I think my viewers would want to know is, so so who were those hooded beings? <laughs> you know, because uh, you described them in such of a funny way, like the Three Stooges, <laughs> like in your opinion, because you, I think you're even mentioning like you felt there was this connection that you already had with them. So, so would that be called like a soul group or some people think of those aliens because the way you describe them or the way they look like in the movie, the communion, <laughs> they don't look very heavenly. Right. So in your opinion, who do you think they were? Yeah, I think they were uh, sort of technicians that, uh, you know, we have our many lives and mm. we come in here and we get into these bodies and, you know, they keep the bodies going. They mm. change our mind. They, uh, you know, 
all kinds of upgrades and even downgrades for mm. to meet the challenges that we scripted before we came here. Mm. And um, yeah, they, um, they, they, you know, I talk about movies a lot because I think that's where the, the answers really are. Yeah. And that, um, you know, the movie, The Wizard of Oz, yeah. uh, Dorothy, she goes up in this spinning vortex and the window breaks off and it hits her in the head and she literally peels away from her body. So this is a near death experience. Mm. And she opens the door and her drab black and white boring life leaves behind. And she goes into this world of giant colorful, you know, living things. There's giant flowers and the colors are uh, vibrant. And then she meets these giggling little munchkins and they approach her in groups of three. And, uh, you know, there's the lollipop guild and the <laughs> yeah. little dancers. I remember. I remember. And then after, you know, she's, uh, you know, having some uh, time with them and stuff. And then this super being shows up as a beautiful colored orb, mm -hmm. Linda. Um, Linda comes floating in and then she uh, talks to Dorothy and gets her set up on her journey. You know, mm -hmm. she's going to take this uh, golden road and um, yellow brick road. And, and she's going to have this, um, what do they call it? The, uh, the hero's journey. She's mm -hmm. going to have this hero's journey and she meets these guys. Uh, you know, one of them's looking for a brain and, the other one's looking for a heart. The other one's looking for courage. And what I get from that, you know, and she's on her way to this Emerald City, this almost astral city type thing. And what I get from that is, you know, if we live our lives and get control of our thoughts, uh, get right. control of the natural selfishness that comes with living in the beast. Right. Um, and we use our brain to choose to live by the intelligence of the heart. Hmm. And we move through our journey with courage, without fear, because we never die. And we are these eternal beings that always go back. Then we get to go home. And there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There you go. <laughs> and that story is right there. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, huh? it's all in the movies. It's all there. <laughs> it's all there, and and that was that that was really close to uh you know my NDE. My NDE is a, I'm a weirdo. I've been the weirdo for. <laughs> I started talking about it uh like five years ago. No, seven years ago, talking to groups and stuff. And mm. everyone always comes up. Yours is the strangest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and I'm like, it's all I got, you know. Hey, tell it like it is. There you go. But then, but now, you know, you look at these, it's it's a lot of movies, you know, the Ewoks and the, uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember Ewoks. <laughs> you know, there, a lot of them are telling us that, okay, there's other look, beings in the universe, right? not in our, not in our realm, you know, yeah. they're in other dimensions and they look different. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you they're sweethearts. They might look like the abominable snowman or something, <laughs> but- but they're sweet. They're, oh yeah. That's the only that's the only thing that exists out there. Is the heart is what matters. <laughs> it's just the heart that matters. <laughs> yeah, not the appearance. Look. Yeah, yeah. How did you communicate, by the way? Because I mean, obviously, you, there was words spoken, but how was it spoken? Like verbally or telepathically? Yeah, it that how we understand uh, communication is that you know we burp out these sounds and our mouth mm -hmm. moves and and that's what. I was experiencing, but it doesn't mean that's what was going on. It was right, right. a pure, it was a pure communication. There weren't, you know, I was genuinely astonished at what I was seeing. And that was evident to them. Mm. And they were entertained by my confusion. And that was evident to me. <laughs> and they were happy at their core and joyful and playful and, you know, I, I heard that in giggling and like I was being, you know, tickled by their vibration. 
Mm. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of indie ears, they'll talk like I do that I had this conversation and I did this and that, and they, you know, you don't, the transition is so smooth. You don't, a lot of times they don't know they're dead. Um, and that's what the sixth sense was all about. You know, that movie Mm -hmm. with Bruce Willis and he goes through that whole movie with that kid that can see dead people. Mm -hmm. And he, at the end, he realizes that he is dead also. And he's, talking to a you know a gifted child right right but he was confused through the whole movie so right. <laughs> but he so figured it you... out and right, right. and 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 we all figured it out and you know a lot of you a lot of people ask me about hell about the other place yeah. um okay maybe we go in and we take our licks uh because of how we behaved here and we have a low vibration but right. we figure it out yeah. We end up coming to conclusion that I was, you know, selfish or self-centered or mean, and I don't want to be that person anymore. And we find our way back to our divine vibration, and then we get ready for the next life. Yeah, because I think, honestly, I think what you're sharing, it, it, it's it's an important thing to discuss because you know, like, like I said, I, I've just been around so many religious people my whole life. And if you do have the the belief that someone is in hell, like a loved one, and you, you believe that they're there forever, like no matter what, it's like, that's, that could really mess you up mentally, you know, and emotionally just thinking like, oh, my loved one is there forever because they lived this particular life. They didn't have this particular belief. So you offering some sort of hope is, I think that's a really good thing, you know, um, just for someone to at least, cool. you know entertain the idea of the possibility of that i think is something healthy for people <laughs> to, to deal with who's been stuck with this dogma for so long but yeah i mean so who did you conclude or did you ever conclude about who who the boss guy was the, the wispy guy <laughs> that's spinning around even though you you mentioned different religions have their interpretation did you get a sense during that experience of who that person was or or was there no like identity yeah. like that you knew so i was telling you earlier that um you know a lot of people write to me and they say you were with jesus christ and you didn't even know right. it and right. i write back and i say i think you're right mm-hmm. you know and somebody from india says that was lord krishna and that was a really blessed thing that you experienced and i said i think you're right <laughs> and <laughs> and so i think us here in the human world you know for ever we've been trying to um describe this incredible relationship we have with the other side with the divine and we've come up with lots of stories and you know if somebody came and gave you and me 10 million dollars 10 billion dollars and said i want Mm -hmm. bill i want you and joshua to create a world religion and and don't hang up this zoom meeting until you're done and (laughs) I swear I would I would screw it up before lunch. Uh, you know, I would say everyone's got to have two dogs, you know. <laughs> and you know, and then that's how, I think that's what happens. Mm. People interject their you know, their personal worldly um opinions or whatever into the religion and then it spirals out of control and right. And you know, guilt and fear and low vibrational stuff that is what we're here to experience and so that gets into the narrative and you know all that stuff you were saying yeah. about people having these thoughts of uh you know losing a loved one and having them in hell and all this stuff and yeah you know none of that exists hmm. they uh, they may struggle for a while in that lower vibrational place but they'll hmm. you know they'll be okay everything will always right. be okay so religious beliefs aside, like who are, they already assume an afterlife, right? But let's just say like your fire, fire friends who kind of thought you were kind of crazy or whatever with these weird beliefs um, or just skeptics in general. What do you tell someone who says, eh, how do you know it wasn't just like an interesting dream <laughs> that was very vivid? What would you say to that? So here we are, 94. So it's almost 30 years ago. And mm-hmm. when I tell you that story, it's absolutely uh crystal clear in my right. in my 
mind's eye. Right. Crystal clear. And with me, dreams, they, you know, I'll wake up and I'll say, oh, that, wow, that was a some kind of a dream or a experience. But, you know, within a minute, it's there's only a couple of points left with it. And then within the five minutes, it's gone, right. you know, forever. And that's that never went away with uh, never went away. And right, right. Um, when I in 2010, 2011, I read uh, Rick Straussman's book, um, DMT, The Spirit Molecule. Mm -hmm. And that was a shocker because when you get to um, chapter 13 and 14 called Beyond the Veil or mm -hmm. Contact Through the Veil. And his guys that he, his volunteers that he was injecting with pure DMT they're going and they're seeing three little playful happy guys and um, a guy in the background, the taller guy that's obviously in charge. And, you know, when I read that chapter, uh, I dropped the book and I walked around for a week saying, wait a minute, this sounds exactly <laughs> like what I went through. Yeah. And, and they could repeat it, you know, he could repeat yeah. it with everybody with the uh, high dose DMT. DMT injection mm. and um, so yeah it's a real it's a real aspect of our journey and yeah you know those kids that are smoking DMT and they're and don't do that you know because that's a <laughs> shocker but they they there's lots of comments on my videos saying that is exactly what I saw on my DMT trip right. and it's and I'm always saying you know i because I got 12, so 13 years of this being, you know, I got yeah. through it. In a week, I got through it. I figured it out. Okay, there's a really incredible, ridiculous, impossible divine side to us. And I saw some of it. And you can see some of it if you recreate the death process with DMT. And that's gnarly, you know, when you come, when you come yeah. to that realization. So, yeah, yeah. I tell these kids, it's like, I'm like, yeah, you you experienced uh, the other side, um, mm -hmm. another dimension other than the physical, mm -hmm. and similar to a near death experience. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is just that that thought is just starting to build momentum, where where these two things are the same. Have you have you had any uh, OBEs since your near death one? You know. Yeah, um, yeah, I can do that OBE thing, like just go sit quietly for um, a few minutes and let the vibration start. You know, we talked about the Kundalini thing, and yeah, yeah, there's a a lot that happens with that with this these vibrations that are now very obvious. Uh, yeah, they're in you all the time, and you kind of hold them back. You kind of hold the um, the static nature of that energy, you have to hold it back mostly, um, or you end up, you know, in a mental hospital. And um, so, yeah, I'm in control of it. And But if I sit down and let go and let the vibrations take over, you can, you can move into other realms. And there's like <laughs> these, there's, you, you were talking about the OBE thing, uh -huh. but you can, so what happens with me is I'll see the colors. First, the colors will start, and you go through the colors, and then there's the grids. And when you get to the grids, you know, that's – everybody says that this is a matrix, this is a simulation. Well, the grids kind of convince you of that because it's a mathematical perfection. And so you go past the grids, and then I see these beings of light, you know, and they're all around. They're all around all of us all the time. Um, our ancestors, um, our loved ones that have passed, our pets that have passed. They're all around. They're living in the dimension that we come from. And this is kind of a, you know, it's a fear test, illusion, amusement park of what we're in. And they're all around us all the time. We've never lost anybody. Right, right. So we're just pretending to be this person right now. That's <laughs> your bill for now. I'm Josh for now. <laughs> exactly. 
I mean, so, you know, you were mentioning earlier about how you had a, your life was pretty good for the most part, even before this experience, but how has your life changed if someone were to just ask you, all right, so what's, what's different with your life now? In a sense of like, practically speaking, do you do anything differently or how do you think differently other than the fact that there's an other side, so to speak, but like, how has it improved based on this experience? Well, I, I, um, you know, went back to that fire department thing and, um, the, when we were helping people, there was much more of an emotional, um, you know, this, um, service to others. That is the highest vibration. Yeah. And that was, that was evident when we, you know, went out and, uh, cut a family out of a car or, um, you know, revived a grandpa, you know, at the Christmas dinner. Um, it was the, the weight of that, that the whole universe was watching and cheering, you know, this, um, you know, these, these acts of service to others and not just on the job, um, you know, in, out in public, you know, you see somebody, um, having difficulty or something and you go right to their side and it's like, how can I help you? And, and even people with emotional things, you know, you'd be there for them. And yeah. because we are, you know, like we've been talking about, we are on this journey. We are in this avatar. We are playing this role. But, um, you know, the other side is interested in those highest emotions. That's why we came here to experience soul growth, you know, in this, um, you know, in this earth school. Yeah. You know, is there any message, you know, as we're kind of concluding, is there any message you'd like to share with our viewers, like any words of encouragement, just whatever is on your heart? Is there a message that you want to share? Um, yeah, right now we're talking NDE. That's the that's the big ticket item. And we, we kind of touched on it a little bit that, um, you know, the NDE can also be the, um, you know, the shamanic medicine, the uh, the DMT, the you can recreate that same thing that the NDE person goes through with those medicines, but don't do it. Uh, um, right. Cause I did, I, I drank ayahuasca a half handful of times and yeah, you move into those other dimensions of you, those other realms of you, the, you asked me about who I thought the wispy guy was. Yeah, I yeah. thought the wispy right. guy, I thought he was my higher self. I thought he was a higher version of me and I'm like a copy or a child mm. uh, that he sends out into the, uh, you know, into this world and has experiences and that he grows from. This is the universe's goal is to have experiences and to grow and to expand because there's infinite number of worlds out there and yeah. You know, we move in all of them eventually. And yeah, so going back to that uh, that other thing with the DMT, you can touch on um, those higher realms, this higher version of you. Uh, and the NDE, that's definitely what I, I'm sure I went through. Um, but you don't want to have an NDE and you don't want to use DMT. <laughs> yeah. But if you, then there's a third one. And this is what all the experts say, that if you want to know what's going on in the universe, talk to the NDE, talk to the shamanic medicine group, and talk to those people who get into the deep meditation where it's almost like a self-hypnosis, a deep trance. Uh, trance. And, they, and like I said, you move past the colors and the grids and um, you can have these experiences. It's built into us. Uh, we used to know this in ancient times, and the shamans still know it. But it's built into us. Raise your vibration through your, you know, your diet and your thoughts, and um, and sit quietly in nature and let go, and you can realize who you really are. Yeah, for sure. No, and I, I confirm that because um, on my channel I, I teach about how to do out of body experiences the natural way, just like with your story. I was. I was intrigued with NDEs and I, I always thought that you only have those experiences through near death. And I remember like long time ago, I'm like, I want those experience experiences, but I don't want to, I don't want to die. <laughs> you know, I just want to have those experiences. Right. And then I eventually learned about out-of-body experiences and then 
um, you know, read Monroe and all those guys. And, and then eventually I just did it the natural way. And I was teaching people, you know, that you can do it in, in a natural way, you know, and it's just takes practice. That's all built within us. So I'm glad that you kind of affirmed that True. as well. Yeah. Um, it's just about going within ourselves and just, it's all consciousness anyways, right? So you're just going within yourself and then you get into that state. You mentioned that vib vibrational state and that's what happened to me the first time. And then I felt that I was like, you know, it felt like I was like being electrocuted, but it didn't hurt, which is like the weirdest thing, but that was all natural. And then ever since then I was having it like every single day, you know, a lot of my, my, the people on my channel, uh, they know the story about me already, but yeah, it's life changing, which is why <laughs> I'm reaching out to you and, and other people who have these uh, amazing experiences to show people that there's a lot more going on than what we see in this physical world. And I want to really just say, you know, thank you, Bill, for, I love your story, man. Like, I really like it. Like, I just, I was telling my wife about it and, you know, she was just so encouraged by it as well. And I know a lot of people are going to be touched by your story, your heart, the authenticity that I just get sense in, as you share, you know, so, so what's, what's next for you? I mean, are, are you working on anything, a book or speaking engagements or more podcasts? What's, what's going on with you next? Yeah, I'll just talk to anybody who wants and eventually <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of overly euphoric all the time. And um, so it's hard to concentrate. People have been after me for this book. I'll, I'll get around to it. But I, I awesome. do want to say this. I, I just want to say what you just said uh, to your listeners about this, that we all have this ability to go out of body and, and have the experiences that everyone's talking about right now. Yeah. Um, it's within all of us and yeah. we, all of us are these divine beings having a worldly experience. And, um, that's a wonderful service that you're doing that uh, you and I just both, we just kind of confirmed each other's belief <laughs> yeah. and, uh, that's a good message, bro. Yeah. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I just met you, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> we're kind of coming to the same conclusion, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, Bill, don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're a busy man. I want to thank you for being on the show. Hopefully you could come on again. And, you know, once again, I just really appreciate what you're doing and sharing your story. So, all righty, guys, you know, just thanks again for watching. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.